been a long time. A lot of people over the last century have prayed and worked for this day. A lot of work lies ahead in the examination of his life and hopefully we'll be able to prove that he practiced heroic virtue and is a saint and the church will prove that. But I'm just very happy. I think of particularly Father Willie's brother, Father Charlie Doyle, who for the last 30 years of his life worked to have his brother's cause opened and was told we leave it to Providence. But uh, Providence has come. I actually feel very humble about the whole thing. I thought it was a very moving, very formal and very serious. I did not realise that there was as much formality about it. I'm old enough to remember as a child we used to say the family rosary, we were traditional Catholics. We had our own prayer. We used to pray for the canonization of Father Willie. The only thing I found slightly strange today was everybody called him Father William. He's never been known as William in the family. He was always Willie Doyle. I think the man was way ahead of his time, and the only touch on it slightly there was his ecumenism. It's become a thing nowadays. It didn't matter to him whether you were black, brown, whatever colour you were, whatever religion you were, you were a human being. Oh, it's wonderful, absolutely, yeah, and deserves it. I've been praying for years and years for this to happen. Now, it will probably be planted by the time it comes about, but at least it's underway, hopefully. Well, I, I'm delighted it's, it's come this far. Um, you know, Father Doyle has died 105 years ago. During that 105 years, much has been written. Uh, many of the books have been reprinted. Uh, and I think what's remarkable is his cult is still strong. Um, there were people here from Ireland, England, America, a significant inter uh, interest on, on, the, on the webcam. Um, so, uh, delighted to have it thus far. Um, but of course, in some ways, the real work starts now too, you know. Um, the officials who were sworn in during the ceremony, they must do their work in terms of uh, going through his writings from a theological point of view, sourcing writings, uh, and a report must be drawn up. And then, of course, when we talk about canonization, we're talking about something supernatural, really. So there, there is a quest for, for a miracle through his intercession. Um, I know people throughout the world are praying for through his intercession, but you know that the church rightly has a high threshold uh, for miracles in, in the cause of beatification and canonization. But the, the prayer that I suppose I've launched or said for the first time in the cathedral this evening, I'm sure that will be offered by many. I, I know some in the diocese who are praying through Father Doyle's intercession already for, for illness and things like that. So, uh, you know, uh, we're all delighted. Uh, there was a, a great joy here. I'm particularly glad that some of Father Doyle's family were able to come because uh, they've been on the periphery of this for a number of years too, wondering would it, will it, and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, yeah, it was great to have, have those with, with us this evening. But in, in some ways, you know, it's up to Almighty God now, really. You know. So a friend of mine recommended that I read the biography of uh, Willie, written by Alfred O'Rahilly in 1920. So I read that in 2010, and I was immediately taken by him. I was really struck by his heroism, his holiness, but also by his wonderful personality. And at the time, I inquired, is there a cause for his canonization? And I was really stunned to see that there wasn't. And I kind of put the idea aside for a while. And a few months later, the opportunity arose to set up a website about him. So I set up a blog, uh, putting up a quote from Father Willie every day. Uh, and that started in June 2010. And gradually, organically, things began to grow and develop. Thanks be to God, I encountered many other people who had had devotion to Father Willie for many years, but also people who had suddenly and recently encountered him and gotten to know him. And they developed a great love and devotion to him as well. Do you know what, it's, a, it's a, been an incredible experience. Um, I have, um, over the years, read the, the lives of, uh, the life of um, uh, Father, Father Willie Doyle, Doyle, and in fact it inspired me uh, in, in my life in ministry as a, an army chaplain, which has been unique in the sense that, uh, like Father Willie, I've served uh, 17 years with the British Army, um, uh, and now have had the proud uh, uh, privilege to come across to, to serve with the Irish Defence Forces. Yeah, it was, it was a great honour and privilege, something I've never experienced before. And, and by the fact I'm a British Army and he was serving, you know, in, in the Army at the time, that's why I got the opportunity to come here today. Um, I, I mean, I, I thought the, the ceremony was, was, was magnificent um, and it was quite emotional maybe. Yeah, yeah, it was certainly emotional and it'd be interesting to see how things um, proceed and move forward. But it's, it's certainly it's something very, very special. Very special. I mean, from, from Royal Army Chaplain's Department, we celebrate various um, 
chaplains because of what that they did. So hopefully this is going to open the profile that um, Willie Doyle will be a name that will become known across British Army chaplains. Over the years, opportunities arose to give talks about him, to produce the book To Raise the Fallen, and uh, engage in various other projects about Father Willie. And then two years ago, we founded the Father Willie Doyle Association, and uh, we petitioned the Bishop of Mees to open a cause. So the Father Willie Doyle Association is the official petitioner or actor for the cause, which means they were the ones responsible for promoting it and also for financing it. Uh, and we ask everyone to help us in that work. It's a really exciting project because I think Father Willie is a wonderful role model model for all of us, particularly for priests, but for all of us as well. He teaches us a lot about generosity uh, and he's a brilliant spiritual tactician. We can learn a lot by uh, reading his, his writings. Uh, so get involved, uh, look at our website willydoyle.org. You can order our, our leaflets and our, our prayer cards on that website. And uh, we want to get out there and talk to people and introduce them to this wonderful man. The next step is the Dios inquiry has now begun. So the tribunal who were sworn in this evening uh, will begin to examine his life. We have theologians who will examine his writings and a historical commission that will gather all his unpublished writings and other materials relating to his life and times. Um, all of that will be put together and a number of witnesses will be examined by the tribunal and hopefully when all that testimony is together it will be collated and sent to Rome. He shows us how to be Christians. He shows us the fullness of the Christian life. It's a life of charity. It's a life of faith and hope. It's a life of joy. It's a life desiring union with Jesus Christ. And that was the hallmark of Willie's life. And even though he died 105 years ago, he is as relevant now as he was then, because the saints are always relevant. They are so caught up in the very spirit of Jesus Christ himself that it's timeless. So I hope we'll be able to show the church that that relevance is so good, so important, that he will be declared a saint one day.